Hey guys, it's Shock with DG, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys all of my best tips on how to improve your aim and KD in Rainbow Six Siege. Before we get into those tips, though, 57% of you watching this video right now aren't subscribed. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I post tip videos like this, as well as gameplay videos daily here on the channel. So whether you're subscribing today or have been for a while, remember to turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. With all that being said, let's get into these tips. So I'm going to try and take this video in a slightly different direction. I've talked about crosshair placement and warming up and all all that a hundred times before in this video we're going to touch on that but i also want to focus on some different things that i don't see people talking about that often and remember to stick around until the end of the video as i'll be sharing some news with you guys then all right so the number one thing i suggest you do to automatically win more gunfights and improve your kd is to unbind your sprint key now before you freak out on me in the comments about how useful sprinting is and how it can save you so much time and win you certain rounds let me explain siege is an fps game but what separates itself from other fps games such as call of duty is how it's a lot slower paced in Siege, it's much more important to play together and have a plan going in beforehand rather than just running in and trying to kill everyone. So for that reason, sprinting isn't going to be as important as it is in other games. But I want to give you a quick example of how sprinting can lose people not only gunfights, but also rounds and sometimes even whole games. So I'm going to play this clip, which I've actually had for quite a while now, just saving it for this video. So let's quickly watch that. So let me explain what you just watched right there. My teammate was in a 1v3 clutch and actually managed to kill two of them. It was looking really promising for him to win the round because the other team was over peaking and feeding him the win. Where he went wrong was right at the end when he killed the second guy and started to sprint to the last person. Now this isn't the best example ever and I've certainly seen some worse plays. This is a very good trap of my teammate so don't think I'm trying to rip him apart here. I just want to point out how if he had just taken a second to fully take out his primary and aim down sights, he could have easily killed the last guy and won the round. Instead he ran at him in a panic and died because of it of course there's no guarantee that he would have won the round but it's definitely possible so what i suggest you do is to unbind your sprint key or bind it to a different key that is a lot harder to press this is going to force you to slow down and think about your next move rather than just rushing in in a full panic this isn't something that you should do forever as you guys know i have my sprint key on but i'm better at knowing when to sprint and when not to so if that's an issue for you i would consider trying it for a short period of time now i know i said i wouldn't talk about this much but it's still very important and you need to learn it if you expect to have good aim and that's good crosshair placement we all know that in siege headshots are insta kills so for that reason this is probably the single most important thing that you could practice when trying to get better aim i want to again give you guys a quick example for what i mean here so i'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek at tomorrow's intro clip in this clip i was playing against some friends of mine braction west and some others so i want you to pay attention to where my crosshair was at all times i knew you're gonna do that bro come on come on west you can't play me like that. Okay, I'm full flash. I'm bottom red. Op four has located a bomb. How? Oh my God! Braxton got destroyed. Oh my God! Bro. Holy! So as you can see after watching that clip, no matter where I was looking, I was aiming perfectly at head height and it got me a very nice kill on Braxton who was Nomad. Since I knew exactly where his head was going to be, I got a really lucky kill onto him. This is the exact reason why having good crosshair placement is so, so important. There's nothing more important when trying to improve your aim, KD, or just ability to win more gunfights than crosshair placement. Alright, so moving on, I want to talk about positioning, but I don't mean in-game. I'm talking about the way you're sitting and positioned when actually playing Siege. Now, I'm mainly talking to my PC guys for the this one but this can even apply to you console players as well now i've had this problem for years and that's if my setup feels off in some way in terms of how i'm positioned i just won't play well i've had this problem for so long and it's actually so frustrating i'll be playing so good and then i move my chair a little bit or i sit differently and boom i just can't aim anymore it sounds ridiculous but trust me it's a real thing and i know a lot of people struggle with it from my twitch chat i think i know how to fix this but i'll go over that just in a second so for me there are two positions that i may be in when i'm playing and that's my slouched very comfortable position where I don't usually play well in and then there's the position I sit in when I'm really serious about winning and trying to play my best in that second position I always play my best but it's harder to get into that one it's so much easier just to slouch down and play like that 
but I think it's very important to sit up and really focus on playing good. If you're in a very lazy position, you probably won't be playing all that well. This is a very personal thing though, and it could change very easily from person to person. Maybe for you, your lazy position, you play much better, which is the opposite for me. But I just wanted to bring this up for those of you who are maybe the same way as me. As for how to fix that feeling where your setup doesn't quite feel right, I suggest you get it as close as possible and then hit the T-hands or whatever you use to warm up. I've noticed that if my setup doesn't quite feel right, after around 30 to 45 minutes of t on, it starts to feel a lot better and I can actually start to play well again. So as I said earlier, this may not apply to as many other people as some of the other tips on this list, but I just wanted to bring it up anyways. Next up, let's talk about sensitivity. Now, this is something that I talk about in a lot of my videos, and you guys have given me some criticism on this, so I just want to go over that really quickly. So as most of you probably know, I always say that settings such as your sensitivity is personal preference. But at the same time, I also say that some people are running too high of a sense and that they should turn it down. So that makes a lot of people confused so I want to just go over that really quickly. Here's something I want everyone to do who's on a really fast DPI or in-game sense. And by really fast, I mean anything over 800 DPI. Take a look at most pro players' movements or just your favorite content creator who produces high-level champion gameplay. You'll notice a lack of twitchiness that you get in a lot of people's movement who have a really high DPI. That twitchiness is an indicator of someone who has too high of a DPI or in-game sensitivity. If you aren't sure what I mean by twitchiness, I'll once again post an example from my Guessing Rank series, which I actually just updated and posted a new video on yesterday Today, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but anyways on to that example yes awesome thank you so much oh my god number one thing bro please lower your dpi please 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 if you don't if you're on if you're on pc and you don't know what uh dpi is it stands for dots per inch it's the sensitivity for your for your mouse I promise you this guy's got at least 2,000 DPI, bro. It's so fast. You can see it. Look, hold on. You can see when he goes to aim down right there, you can just tell that it's so high. And like right here, you can just see that it's so high. Oh, boy. Um, I, I will tell you automatically. This is too short of a clip to tell game sense or anything like that. <clears throat> but I will say right off the bat, if you want to become 10 times better immediately, lower your DPI. Lower it to either 400 or 800. It is the like industry standard. So as you can see, this person's movement was very bad and his sensitivity or DPI was so high that he actually didn't have the freedom of movement in his gameplay. If you have that high of a sensitivity, you may not notice it, but it's actually restricting how much you can move. Notice how he wasn't really tracking anyone in that because if he barely moved his mouse, he would go right past them because of how fast his sense was. This is why I say that you need to turn it down sometimes. So yes, sensitivity is personal preference to an extent, but you can also have it be too fast and hurt you as well. All right, for my fifth tip, I won't spend too much time on this, but you need to learn when to tap fire and when to full auto and how to control recoil efficiently this can be very important in a bunch of different situations but for example if you have trouble controlling recoil it's going to severely impact how well you could track someone and land your shots like i said i don't want to go too in depth on this because i've already made a full in-depth eight minute guide on how to control recoil and siege along with that i've also made one on both ella and the smg 11 which a lot of people consider to be two of the most difficult weapons in siege to control both links to those videos will be down in the description if you're interested in watching them i think that's going to wrap up this video though but before you go if you remember earlier in this video i said that i had some news for you all so i recently got sponsored by this game called vikings war of clans now i'm not obligated to make this part of the video and they aren't paying me to do so but i'll be doing a sponsor stream for them today and i would really appreciate it if you guys would help me reach my download goal for this sponsorship the game works on ios android and even pc and will only take you 30 seconds to a minute to download the game is completely free and the best part about it is that it directly supports me if you download it so if you'd like to support me i'll have the link to the game down below in the description all you have to do is get to level 7 in game and your download will count for me. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you all have a great day and thank you all so much for watching.